Resistance operatives disabled an advent convoy in this region, and they sent word for us to come in and seize whatever we can. This is the perfect opportunity for us to recover some of their gear. We'll need to secure the AO and neutralize any hostiles still in the area if we're going to get anything of use out of there. Hey, this is Beleaf Blue 79, and I'm proud to present episode 14 of my Long War of the Chosen Mod Jam playthrough. As Bradford explained, this is going to be a very uh, valuable opportunity for us to gain some gear, i.e. Uh, corpses, as uh, we are doing a supply raid. Now, I did take seven people to this one because of... Uh, seven with a boost, I was just more comfortable than doing that as opposed to five. Symbol is that. Menace one five. The disabled advent convoy is just ahead. Engage and eliminate all hostile forces. All right, so you heard Bradford. We have to kill everything on the map and avoid as much as possible destroying the supply crates. So just like we did uh, in an earlier episode. All right. This supply rate is 10 to 12 enemies. Although I do expect it'll be closer to the 12. Playing this game as much as I have. Raiders roll. Even though I can't be sure where the, the supply rate, the strength trying to move in to our home region of Western Europe is coming from. Moving out. I nonetheless do expect closer to the 12. Moving on target location. We're just moving into place here. There's going to be a lot of a lot of this setup before our initial ambush. So, you know, if you feel that this isn't very very entertaining for you, do feel free to skip ahead a few minutes or so Will do. until the combat starts. And I'll try to be as interesting as I can up until that point. But we have uh, encountered. A group. Sectoid soldier and a couple of solitudes, it looks like. Let's go, let's go. So nothing we haven't seen before. And I like setting up my uh, hunter on the right side. A snapshot. Just out of their vision. Is it is the perfect place to put uh, someone with snapshot? Posizione confirmata. I would have liked some high ground as well, but we don't have that here. At least not any usable high ground. So again, this is where a death from above would suffer a bit. I press on. Death from above sniping, to be more specific. Okay, there's a second group, and if if we can help it, I would like to not activate both at once. Enemy squad located. Standard operating procedure. So now we kind of want to swing over to the left. We want to get away from the group on the right. And, and try to go after the Saktoid and Suit 2 Solitudes, because they're the ones closest to us. So that's exactly what we're going to do. That's what I'm going to spend this turn doing. Just swinging over to the left. Now, of course, we still want to have our Shinobi to have eyes on that other group. Sometimes the enemy... Oh, a third group with Chrysalids. Thankfully, only crawlers at this stage, but still, melee enemies, a lot like the stun lancers, the chrysalids, you want to take them out ASAP. Mm -hmm. So the chrysalids can't poison you, but they do have the melee attack. They will charge at you. They can attack on the ground. The service of fire. So stay the hell away if you can't kill them and 
flashbang them to boot. On the move. So, like, as I was saying, we want to have our shinobi in a position where he can at least see what's going on over there because the enemies can get jobs. They're assigned to specific jobs. And I find sometimes on supply raids, HQ assaults, troop transports, the enemy pods can be assigned a flanking job. So they, they know where you are and they actively try to flank you. And I wanted to position my shinobi in order to stop that. Now there's a number of conditions that must be met. Depends on what's in the pod. Like, I haven't studied enough to know these conditions, right. but I do know that this flanging job exists. And I don't want to be met with a nasty surprise. Okay, so the advent group moves to the left. Not ideal. This is where being patient is. My, my patient, past commander here, not doing this live. Uh, past commander's patience is starting to wear a bit thin. We are spending, we're losing one willpower every three turns. Because I go into the supply raid and I go in there thinking, okay, let's take out one group at a time, and this just doesn't happen. Okay, I'm glad that I didn't stand too close to that that vehicle. If you see a vehicle on fire, keep a reasonable distance. If that, if it explodes, that's six points of damage. That would have been a kill on the soldier standing near it. I don't think vehicles should start on fire for that reason. It would be different if I were to have launched a grenade there, or a purifier comes there, and or whatnot, but to have it explode on its own, I feel was a bit of an oversight by the developers. Okay, so I have decent shots. But again, I see three groups right now, or at least one soldier can see three groups. So what I'm thinking right now is the ones that are not in concealment, can they see all three of those groups? While I make the decision here whether or not to engage. And actually, I don't. I feel like I'd like to get my flashbang grenades, which is a good option given the chrysalid. They do a lot to make, they, they do a lot to neuter the, the solitudes as well and reduce the aim of the septoid soldier. So I want to have my flashbang grenades and my officer as well as carrying them in a good position before I engage. Now it's just me choosing the position of my shinobi and choosing where I should bring my sniper. Because if I leave my sniper on the right, then maybe he can get a cheap flank or two. Gotcha. But I think moving up at least a little is a good idea. There was a tool tip that I saw on the loading screen saying don't let your hunters fall too far behind, and it's a good idea. So it's not a sniper. Like, I keep getting the classes mixed up because I'm so used to playing a vanilla Long War 2. Or not vanilla. Long War of the Chosen vanilla. That I'm going to get the classes mixed up at times. So thank you for bearing with me with that. The Hunter is very similar to a snapshot sniper, but they're not exactly the same. Because the Hunter carries a sword. That's why you want to... Even if they're not sword spec, maybe that it gives you another option. Okay. On my way. So I continue to set up here. I've committed to swinging to the left pretty clearly here. And if I were me, I wouldn't go that close to the car. Like you have to be almost 110% sure that it's safe. Once you get later into the game, I know, and UFOpedia warns you of this, Roger but the that. detection tiles are a bit of a lie. So meaning that they're actually a bit bigger than what you're shown. 
But in any case, you do want to be safe rather than sorry. Even if you can see everything. And there's no big sectopods or gatekeepers yet. You want to be safe rather than sorry. So I've done a good job, you know, filling some filler in. As the enemies just still are not moving in the way that I want. So you want to know what it's time for? Have you ever heard of a beagle rush maneuver? That's what's crossing through my mind right now. So you let the enemies walk in. And then you go on overwatch. And then after, you still have a whole nother turn to respond to it. So you let them walk into you on their turn. And this is called the beagle rush maneuver. The fine illogica would call it forcing the reveal. Now, this is known as somewhat of an exploit. So again, this is this is a bit dirty. But you want to know what? The enemies just aren't cooperating with me. Like, what am I to do? Am I to wait 15, 20 turns to get the perfect ambush? Of course not, because then I'm just going to lose willpower and my soldiers. So I fully have this in mind at this point. Beagle Rush Maneuver. I'm going to leave one of my soldiers out in the open. Hope that they run into me. Reveal. Party starts. With seven people, I feel okay activating 9 at 1. Like, yeah, not pretty. Not how you, you want to engage, if you can tell. But I try not to do this. But the... Uh, that's what I'm going to do. That's what the situation calls for. Rolling. Now, I've noticed at the start of some of my videos, the screen flickers a bit. I wish that it wouldn't do that. I don't know what is causing that. But again, that's what you get for recording on a laptop, I guess. That's a little bit past its I'm prime. Right There's better things to spend my uh, dollars on than a new computer. It's the unfortunate reality of being an adult. It sucks. You have to you have to make responsible choices. And one of them is I can't really spend a lot of money on a new computer right now. Anywho, arsonist is a good candidate to move up. Let's get a flamethrower in. I want to be careful with her overwatch because at least at this point it wasn't very familiar with the arsonist class. Okay, let's see what the enemies do here. Spoiler alert. They don't end up revealing us this turn. So we have to Try again next turn. And now the enemy groups are spreading out, which is extremely annoying for me. We have to wait another turn, but I'm still kind of fully committed to the Beagle Rush. If memory serves. My memory isn't perfect. I could have very well just set that advent group on fire and just said, to hell with it, let's go from there. That wouldn't have been a great move, but it would have been a move that I would make, because I don't have a lot of patience. Again, again, I think I wasn't 100% sure that I saw everything. It was very close to it, but not 100. I got away with it. You want to be careful with that on network towers. If you're trying to... That's the fourth step of the liberation chain. It's, I will talk about that later in more detail. But one strategy is you can sneak someone to a terminal... Pack it, stun enemies for two turns. 
and then try to beat the mission that way. It's one of two strategies. You can use the others just fighting through it. Again, I will have more detail on network towers when we get to that point. Or you can just look it up on UFOpedia. But what I was trying to, the point I'm trying to make is you want to be careful, especially in that type of mission, if you're going to be sneaking around. Because you activate before you're ready, it's curtains. You're, it's over. You're done. Okay, we're gonna get auction here. You betcha! It's done. Let the bullets fly. We're taught about them. Shotgun Overwatch hit. There's the Faptoid group. And the Chrysalid group. So honestly, I was hoping I would get a little bit better out of this. But I'm just going to say this right now. Could you imagine doing this with five people? I would have had to wait in that scenario. And who knows how long that would be. Everybody would be shaken by the end of it. No willpower. Okay, so I'm not in the best of positions. Again, like I said, I'm being redundant and saying that I wish it was... I was a bit more fortunate there. Okay, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? You know, Pathfinder is a good target for me because it has the most mobility. It could flank people. And the Chrysalids are my target. There's also still another group yet on the map because we know it's a 10 to 12. So there is some risk. And this is a very common bug that you see there. She's not standing out in the open. She's standing in corner covered. Grenade wouldn't be bad for the chrysalids, although I do want to try to preserve corpses as much as possible. Solitids are going to use acid spit. They always do. And then go after one of the chrysalids. Doing three damage. In hindsight, I think a grenade was a little bit smarter. Even if I lost a corpse or two. Okay, after about two minutes of uh, useless contemplation, I decide to make the obvious move of committing my other assault and trying to do as much damage as possible to one of the chrysalids. I wanted to use the. I wanted to do it on the one at higher health and not waste that high damaging shot, which I don't have a lot of on just the one HP. I've still got grenades if necessary. Although I still have to start thinking about what I'm going to do to control the, the group on the right as well as the solitude. So at least I'm hoping I'm keeping that in mind and I am because I'm committing to a rapid deploy. So flashbangs are sufficient at this stage. And, and I can get three there, only two on the other side. Although it's a pathfinder, so yeah, it's still at 12 mobility. And the more you know, I read this on UFOpedia. One mobility Mobility tells you the number of meters a soldier can move in a single action. And one tile is 1.5 meters. So 
So 12 mobility, 8 tiles, I kind of always knew that. But now I know how to do the math for... Um, for anything. Okay, we got our ranger at 79 on the injured one and we got him. We got it. It's an expensive command, but to kill a chrysalid, I believe, is worth it. The chrysalids are the ones that scare me the most by far. Okay, chrysalids are gone. Good riddance as well. Nobody likes chrysalids. Especially if you've played XCOM Enemy Unknown or Enemy Within. Where they were, at the point they showed up, very lethal. Much worse than the crawlers that we're seeing at this point. They would have more health, and they could kill any of your soldiers in a single uh, attack. If we were playing XCOM Enemy Unknown or Within. Okay, well, I've got to move up if I want to do anything. Which means the risk of activating, even if it's a tile. Follow me. So I weigh that chance, and I do feel that it's worth it. Problem is, I can't do anything from there. They're too far away for chem thrower suppression. So, that was kind of dumb. So I just overwatch. Got full cover from the Solitudes. The only thing I don't have full cover from from there is actually the Frost, Frost dude, Frost droid. I'm trying hard to see. No, it's a trooper. And yeah, I commit. I'm in half cover, but I've got Lone Wolf for an additional bit of defense. I don't want those two doing anything now. Couple of shots can out dead soldier. We just don't have the armor yet. So really, really castrate their odds. Although I will have quite the formidable challenge for me next turn. Start chipping away at one of the Solitudes. And we actually got a kill, which is, again, I was not counting on that, but I will take it. I would have been happy just getting a hit. Here goes the Pathfinder. That's either a flank or close to it. No, that's a flank. But it's a miss. Thank you, Flashbang. Acid spit is wide of the target. Uh, that was close. Okay, and it's our moves again. Still five active. With an overwatch to deal with. Even if they're disoriented, I don't like running it without having lightning reflexes. Which we have two of in this squad. I maybe mean, shouldn't have done that, because that means for other squads, they don't have a member with lightning reflexes in it, so I might want to rethink my, uh, my loadouts. This is, again, hindsight. But then again, maybe two lightning reflexes soldiers are worth it on a critical mission like a supply raid, even on the attempt to 12. Usually I'm pretty deliberate in my setup, so I must have thought that it was worth it. Okay, we continue to chip away at the Pathfinder. Their corpses are quite valuable, which is the reason for taking those mediocre shots. But two 60 ish shot shots, and we got them with one. About what you expect. Now, moving up risks another activation, but gives me a much better shot at the Solitude. 
and it also clears the overwatch of the frost trooper. And we did not activate, thankfully. And we just try to hit that thing as hard as we can, and we get another kill. Awesome. Oh, music to my ears. We had other options. We had more shots. Well, at least one more shot. Because it was going to do its poison cloud anyway, and it could have reached a number of soldiers. Now, we have a flank there with Maurizio. The problem is, if I go for that and activate a group, and we know there's another one out there, probably in that direction, then he's just hung out to dry. And then I don't have much to respond to that activation either. So this is pretty high risk for not a whole lot of reward in just killing a basic frost trooper. If it was maybe something more dangerous, it may be worth the risk. I like this move a lot better because I've got cover now in that direction if I activate. And I've already went up ahead with Elena. 81. I'm going to have to use the stun because the shotgun shot won't be very good from back there. And it looks like the stun is no good either. It happens. It's a 78. And those shots are going to miss a fair amount of the time and you better be prepared for it. <sighs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I hope I can get something with my flamethrower from this angle. And I can only get one or the other. But I choose to use the blast canister, so I get a movement option after. Okay. The problem is with the flamethrower. So I got a burn on one of them, I believe. Or I got damage on one of them. The problem is, it's like it's a hit roll through cover from there. So they were it was terrible shots I was Let's taking go. with my flamethrower. The technical flamethrower does not work like that. It doesn't have a brawl to hit. If it's lit up, it automatically hits. So that's the difference between the technical and the arsonist. I overwatch with my uh, hunter. Both of those enemies are flanked. They're going to move to try to... It's another flashbang. Again, pretty expensive, but I didn't want them doing anything nasty. I have some people in half cover pretty close up. So I think I don't want them taking their full shots uncontrolled. We got another overwatch. Okay, still no damage, and there's the last group. So it would have certainly been an activation had I been reckless on my previous turn. Thankfully, I wasn't. Yellow alert. Missed. There's not much you can do about yellow alert. You gotta hope that half cover is good enough because you need to advance at a somewhat reasonable rate in a lot of missions. Just don't stand out of cover between enemy turns or then you will be punished. Okay, we got a flanking shot. But we whiff. Well, it was either a flanking shot or half cover. point was it was a decent shot and we failed. So we gotta get rid of the overwatch, but you have to keep in mind the sectoid. The sectoid is far back and it's gonna be hard for our other soldiers to get to, so if you get some mind control off, we're in some big trouble. 
A sectoid that's far in the back, but can only see one soldier and you're separated from your squad is very dangerous. But, that plane, an eventual kill of the engineer, was too good for me to pass up. And I was actually thinking about that sectoid while I was playing. And this is why you see me wanting to dash all the way up there. So I can do something next turn if push comes to shove and one of our soldiers becomes mind controlled. Could also move to here and run and gun and kill that trooper, but that's my last point of ammo. And that's not nothing. It is a basic trooper, but that's again one last shot coming at me. And we still have to do something about the sectoid soldier and Frost Trooper. If I want to make that move against the Trooper near the car. Tempra where suppression would guarantee set him on fire, but he is out in the open now. Got it. And the suppression is more expensive in terms of ammo, so I went with this. Let it burn, and the Septoid is burning. We don't have to worry about it, at least for next turn. I want to stay far enough back, given he's only on 4 health, even with a lone wolf. I don't... the reason why I circled that fire there is because I'm worried it might spread to the vehicle. But here's pretty safe. Full cover, 100% dead. I don't know why we didn't get any cryo life from that frost trooper. You get that from killing frost enemies on these types of missions. At least I assumed that, but I, apparently I didn't get any there. You use the cryo light later on in the game to build frost stuff. That's a later sort of thing. Catch my drift. Okay, but now I make the move against the trooper because the, clo the coast is clear behind me. Was it smart? I don't know, but it's what I chose to do. And again, I feel that I have to go for the stun because the 78, I thought I would have had better. The 78's not good enough to me for me to be that close to it. And I'm a bit, I'm a bit indecisive now. Obviously, the priority is picking up the loot. I have only a turn remaining. Or else it will expire, and that's just income that's not coming back if I don't get it. I've only got one point of ammo left as well, so is that worth a 78? I decided it wasn't. See, trooper's done, but that means we do have to deal with it next turn. And I'm out of flashbang grenades on uh, Heather. She can no longer contribute that way. Got your stuff here. This is where you feel the flashbang grenadier being a bit weak in the early game, and they are. They're an investment for later. No when your other soldiers boss. want to be equipping ammo or vests. Or whatever else I unlock due to mod jam. But someone's got to have flashbangs. Still a decent method of control. And that'll be the flashbang uh, grenadier. I'm going. Just when everybody on. has them, it's not valuable. It's why you don't print money. Because if you just print money, if money grew on trees, it would be as valuable as leaves. I think the Sactoid burned itself again. And it's just standing there ready to be executed. And here's the worrisome move. And it just raises a zombie. But it's stupid. It should have gone for its mind spin. 
If I were the sock toilet, I would have gone for a mind spin. The zombie, I'm not too worried about. A respite for the dead. The aliens have found a way to mind control them now. Still only have one shot because I chose to use the shunt pot hunting shotgun. And if I want to reload that baby to full, it's my full turn. Or otherwise it's just a single shell. That's the trade-off you take for the additional damage and armor piercing. Whatever you say. So I decide I want to get some damage in on that Sucktoid. Maybe destroy its cover. Not counting on it though, without any skills to improve the gra grenade. Bombs away. That's the huge difference between vanilla and Oxford. And basic. That's the difference between Long War 2 and vanilla. In Long War 2, the grenades will not reliably destroy cover without something like Sapper combat engineer. You'll have to find another way. And that'll be one of the hardest things tactically for a newer player to get used to. Try to take another shot at the zombie knowing I won't get a suck toy dead this turn. Unless I want to grenade it there to death, go. which I don't because I do want to keep its corpse. You get 10 of them, you got the autopsy for free. And I don't think we're anywhere close to 10 yet, but every little bit counts. If you do that by the time you do the HQ assault, if you, if you save your septoids, you'll have 10 by the time you do your first HQ. Very likely. And we just slice up the Septoid Soldier. Swish, swoosh, swash. Dead. And we take a shot at the true bird, flanking shot, and it's dead. The death soon made it really seem like that hurt, which is very satisfying. And it has to be a reload here. The grenade is no bueno. As I mentioned just a few moments ago. And we pretty much have this in the bag. As long as we don't like leave people standing out of cover. This is the last enemy for the total of 12. Even though it says we've killed 12 on the top right. Zombie doesn't count towards your 10 to 12 total. Obviously. Except I just raised a dead trooper. Arun Aladon. No. Yes. Even for the loot, we don't stand out of cover. Even if it only had one turn, I would not stand out of cover for it. That's... That's, again, not respecting the lives of your soldiers. Your most valuable asset, by the way, is a high-level soldier. There comes the mind spin and it's panic. So Lena's just going to be useful, useless for this turn. Kate, no shots with my uh, hunter. Problem is, it's not a guarantee. Very good chance, but not a guarantee. But I'm, I'm, I'm out of patience. I want to be done with this. Let's get a kill on our officer. Well, how about that? Status confirmed. All hostiles are down.
down and the area is secure. Status confirmed. So yet another flawless mission, exactly what we want to be doing early game, especially after lo losing that soldier early. Stringing these flawless missions together, building up the train of resources, building up the train of new soldiers coming in so we can get more squads active and out there and just blow this thing up even further. Prosperity will not be undone by the reckless actions of a few misguided dissidents today. We stand with the elders. Trust in their wisdom, and we shall overcome this crisis. There, with my shinobi, which I eventually want to develop into a shooting shinobi, I'm faced with the choice between either combatives or executioner. And it's a difficult choice because I think both of them are good perks for the shooting type of shinobi, but I eventually chose combatives because that really helps you in the later parts of the game to to deal with if you get in a tough situation to deal with for a turn something like a muton muton centurion muton elite archon things like that that show up a bit later with my uh, grenadier and hunter it was a little bit more straightforward choosing the support and sniper routes respectively I'd like to get a better look at that rifle the Chosen Hunter uses. There's just no way he can be that accurate without some kind of help. the refuge of the insidious Templars. Do not assume that their aid will make any difference to your cause. So as we can see, uh, as I was scanning to detect Liberation Part 2, uh, we now have our half the workstation mission fully infiltrated, and we'll tackle that in the next episode. Thank you for watching, see you next time, and take care.